for our second speaker. Um, Dr. John Frederick Tapia is an associate professor in chemical engineering department of De La Salle University. He earned his uh, PhD in chemical in engineering at De La Salle University and was a postdoctoral research associate in university last year. So his research interest includes uh, process systems engineering of low carbon energy systems, mathematical modeling of biomass value chains, uh, specifically oil palm value chain. And he's also interested in GIS-based analysis of suitable lands for oil palm. He has around 20 Scopus Index research articles and has an H index of E. Without further ado, let's all welcome Dr. John Frederick Tapia. Hello. Um, thank you for that um, introduction. So is my screen uh, visible in the, uh, on Zoom? Yes, we can see it, Fred. Okay, so I'll start with, um, well, what I'm talking about today is about the ternary diagram visualization of epidemic progression, so specifically for COVID-19. So I mean, the recent uh, news here in the Philippines, uh, we have been uh, tracking on how many cases have been added uh, daily, how many have recovered, and how many died due to COVID-19. So we, we thought of um, some visual, visualization in which we combine these three variables and plot it in a ternary diagram. So just a short outline of my presentation. So I'll discuss about um, um, the epidemic progression in COVID-19, which um, I'll present what's the limitation of uh, the curves or the epidemic curve that uh, we use to um, track the disease. There's some indicators for epidemic progression, including the rates and the numbers itself. And then I'll discuss or demonstrate the ternary diagram methodology. And uh, as the highlight of this talk would be the different uh, 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 ternary diagrams, which includes an illustration of some selected countries, a scatter plot. The global data as of mid-June, um, the time when we are um, writing this uh, um, um, research uh, study, uh, some select Southeast Asian countries. And recently, I just uh, um, tried to um, determine what's happening, especially in the country in the Philippines and specifically in the uh, its main uh, region or main capital region, which is the NCR. So for the NCR plot, I'll be presenting what happened during the lockdown on or the enhanced community quarantine lockdown. And after the lockdown has been, or uh, after the lockdown being uh, loosened or becomes um, a general community quarantine and some advantages, and then some advantages for the ternary diagram. So um, the global dis or the disease has caused um, a major health crisis in which up to this date, uh, we have around 16 million cases worldwide with 645,000 deaths. So with the absence of uh, a widely available vaccine and viable and widely available vaccine has made countries to rely on interventions such as lockdown. So as you can see in this picture, we have in the Philippines, what we call a community quarantine, and we classify regions depending on the uh, the strictness of the community quarantine. Now, as the lockdown period gets longer, for example, here in the Philippines, we have around three months or three and a, uh, almost four months of uh, um, of community quarantine. The effect on the economy increases. So how do we uh, visualize the epidemic or co uh, specifically COVID-19 in um, a specific region such as in the Philippines or in the national capital region? So we keep track using an epidemic curve as shown, and it relies on the number of cases. So it, uh, it is uh, reliant on the uh, how many cases are um, added or how many cases in total 
on, on a specific day. But then the limitation of the um, epidemic curve is testing. So um, in the red curve, we cannot observe this if we are hindered with a limited testing capacity as shown. So what are the indicators that we have for the disease outbreak? So I've uh, written here eight uh, indicators for disease outbreak. So we, we are quite familiar with the reproductive number as to how many individuals can be infected per individual or per in infected individual. The cases per uh, million of population, which um, indicates the spread of the disease in a particular region. The doubling time, which uh, denotes how many how, or how much time is uh, needed or how much time is required for the number of cases to double. And some familiar indicators such as the number of active cases, fatalities, recoveries, confirmed cases, and cumulative number of cases. So for our visualization, we focus on the three uh, indicators, the number of deaths, the active cases, and recoveries. All of these are cumulative on a specific date. So um, what is a ternary diagram? In disciplines such as engineering, we are using ternary diagrams in different applications. So uh, if we are given with three variables, where the ratio of the three variables is important, uh, we can describe it in a ternary plot as shown here. Now, um, in, say, genetic or uh, civil engineering, which focuses on soil texture, the percentage of sand, clay, and silt um, can be plotted in a ternary diagram. And the soil texture can be classified depending on the region where the point um, is located. And then we, in chemical engineering, we use ternary diagram to uh, model liquid-liquid uh, extraction or extraction of um, organic compounds using solvent in a three-component mixture, uh, in this case, ethanol, water, and ester. So in epidemics, so we, um, just like what I mentioned, we use three um, variables to be plotted in the diagram. So how does the ternary diagram works? So the starting point of the ternary diagram um, is when the first uh, infected individual or the first case appears. So that would be uh, plotted on the origin. So this would be 100% uh, active cases. And then this point, um, the point uh, on the vertex above which shown here um, is uh, the uh, signifies that 100% um, death, and in the lower uh, right signifies the number the 100% recovery uh, point. Now our um, goal is to actually reach the um, to actually reach the line where there are no active cases appear. So this is the orange line highlighted in this um, slide. And then for example, we have for the point, first point, we have a thousand cases, 200 recoveries and 50 deaths, which, uh, which can be translated into 80% active, 16% recoveries and 50% death or 4% death. Uh, we can plot this by locating these points or this percentages into the ternary diagram. So in these three lines. And then the intersection can be identified as our first point. Another demonstration would be, for example, there are more recoveries and somehow uh, more deaths. Like in this point, we have 1,500 active cases. Um, 800 recoveries, 200 deaths, or 60%, 32, and 8% respectively. So we, again, um, identify the percentages in the lines. And then for uh, we determine the intersection of this line. And that would be our second point. So this is how you plot um, a, the, the 
um, reports or the reported cases in a ternary diagram. So, um, as to, to illustrate this, uh, this uh, uh, plot, so I presented the following uh, ternary diagrams. One would be for the trajectory uh, for, of selected countries as scatter plots. So that would be for uh, my illustration of the approach or visualization. Then the global data as of mid-June containing all points uh, or in uh, cumulative numbers uh, around mid-June. Then some selected East Asian, Southeast Asian countries, which is presented as a, a line plot. And then for the latest one, which I had uh, compiled last July 18, um, for the plot for the national capital region in the Philippines before and after the enhanced community quarantine. So uh, this data, especially the first three, were obtained from the Center for Systems Science and Engineering at Johns Hopkins University in the link below. Now, the NCR data was obtained from the DOH tracker, which I accessed on um, July 23. And the data was uh, plotted in uh, Python using a uh, the ternary package, which I obtained in um, GitHub. So here's an illustration of the uh, plots for uh, select countries. So I've chosen... Uh, Belgium, as it is, it has the highest uh, death rate at the time of writing this uh, paper or this presentation. And then I included some uh, de uh, developed countries like South, uh, Spain, Italy, South Korea. So in this case, you see how the plots were forming a line, wherein at some point the lines were really spread out. Um, in the case where the number of recoveries is from, say, uh, 30 to uh, 55 percent for China and um, South Korea. And then for some, like in uh, Spain and Italy, at around 40 to 45 percent. So the scattering of the, the lines signifies um, the rate at which the number of cases, the number of deaths, and the number of recoveries progresses. So the more scattered it is, the more um, in, uh, uh, in a curved fashion, the more scattered the line is or the points is, the more, um, the more or the faster the changes happen. So this is for the uh, some of the selected countries. Now, the, the points at the end of the curve signifies the latest um, data as of the visualization. So this is around mid-June. So the, ultimately, you can see which countries have uh, already on the, uh, on, uh, or near the no active case line. So the, um, this is somehow signifies that uh, how they are, how the, their response is working for their country. So here's the global data as of the um, mid-June. So as you can see, most of the points were uh, located below uh, the 20% uh, death rate, which uh, is important because uh, uh, which is which valid or which verifies that the disease has um, a which verifies that the disease has a low death rate. Now, if we zoom this in, so if we um, zoom this in, so there. So you can see which countries is has been or is on the, uh, or you can see the distance from of the uh, countries for, for in the um, no pandemic or the no active case line, which the Philippines uh, at the time of this plotting is far or is very far from the uh, from this line. And then if we zoom in for some select countries, you will notice the trajectory of different Southeast Asian countries in which uh, only the Philippines has experienced um, something like 
uh, a more of a backward uh, direction as uh, uh, as signified in this uh, um, plot. And then later I will show the I will show the uh, the plot for NCR, which also contains this kind of um, trajectory or this uh, um, this line. Okay. And then um, I tried to actually plot uh, the number of cases, deaths, and recoveries for the uh, for different cities in NCR. But unfortunately, when I access the the website of um, Department of Health, they only present um, the data for the NCR. So what happens during the ECQ is shown in this plot. So we are progressing from somewhere um, a recovery rate of 5% to around 35%. Uh, percent. Now, what happens during the um, general community quarantine is that we experience more of a um, forward um, approach or a forward direction, but at around June 20, the trajectory starts to move backwards until to a point where we have around 30% recoveries out of the community uh, number of cases. And then on July 11, it starts to, um, to move forward, in which at July 30, we experience the highest number of recoveries in that in a single day. So we show or we zoom that um, in this case, we have a uh, progressive uh, direction during the enhanced community quarantine and a um, somehow um, uh, for a short or for a certain period, we move backwards. Now, the good thing about what happened in, um, in NCR is that the death rate is decreasing. So it to around around 11% of the total number of cases at the beginning, we had to around 4% uh, at the latest. So what are the advantages of the ternary diagram? So as I've shown in this, uh, um, in this, uh, uh, in the illustration, so it presents a two-dimensional progression of the epidemic, which uh, shows a simultaneous plotting of uh, um, number of cases, number of um, recoveries, and number of deaths. Then we can also compare the different uh, regions in terms of their um, progress from, uh, since we have a um, more of a specific target in this, uh, um, in this ternary diagram. And then the spread of successive points along the given trajectory is uh, indicates the dynamics. And finally, it, it provides a progress bar. So like what I've said, we have a certain point of origin and a certain point of uh, success for the, um, the epidemic or, the, or in this case, in, in COVID-19. Some conclusions. So the ternary diagram actually gives the some insights for planning as we can see how uh, how we are doing in terms of our interventions, lockdowns, or uh, if there are available antiviral, antivirals and some other uh, um, intervention. So I've already given the four main advantages of this cover uh, the epidemic curves. Then this can be used for insights for prioritizing facilities and financial aid or another measure. So if you have question after this talk, uh, just uh, send me an email to this email address I showed. So thank you very much for your attention. Okay, thank you, Dr. Tapia. Uh, but for now, if you have questions, you can type it in the group chat box, either in YouTube or here in Zoom. Uh, 